The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. Jesus said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So the twelve went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Uh, Last week we uh, heard uh, in the readings this whole sense of some of the criteria of what it is to be a prophet, what it is to be a missionary, what it is to be a messenger of the Gospel. One of it was being uh, reluctant or hesitant, uh, unworthy, uh, the other part was ill-equipped, and yet God still chooses. And, and there's uh, countless times in the scriptures that, and, and all of them, that God uses those who are weak, those who are humble, those, um, uh, those who are not most popular or most expected, even in the first reading. Uh, Amos, who's just a herdsman, is chosen to proclaim to the people of Israel. Well, we know that we're all chosen through our baptism. We're uh, uh, sealed with the gift and power of the Holy Spirit, and that in itself is that command to go out and proclaim the good news. We don't have to wait for this invitation to come. In fact, it's not an invitation. It is a command. Go and share the good news. Go and spread the gift of the resurrection, the joy that only the Lord can offer. And in the gospel today, we hear how this is, in a sense, supposed to be done. Jesus sends out his apostles in pairs, and to go and proclaim the good news, uh, a good news of repentance, meaning seeking forgiveness and reconciliation from God and from one another. For the ways that we have strayed from the path, for the ways that we have forgotten who we are and who God is and who people are in our lives, there's this whole reality of reconciliation, this whole call of healing, And there is an urgency to that message because Jesus says, go out, don't take any money with you, don't take any extra clothing, don't take anything but put some sandals on your feet and a staff and go forward. Whenever I read this uh, gospel and this this commissioning and there is this urgency and Jesus tells them not to uh, take too much with them for two, I think, particular reasons. One, um, sometimes we tend to rely on so many other things and including ourselves instead of relying on God. So when you have no money and you're really not taking any extra food or anything, you're really relying on the uh, providence of God's grace and the fact that uh, things will be provided. And so there is this sense of reliance and trust in God, which sometimes in our lives we forget and we get caught up with things. The other reason why we don't take too many things uh, on the journey except the staff is that um, things can slow us down. I often remember uh, uh, my mother and I, when we traveled to Poland a number of years ago, um, uh, we both tended to overpack. And we had these big suitcases. And uh, we didn't drive in Poland because the drivers in Poland are very dangerous. Okay, so we took the train to many different places. And when you're lugging things around, it slows you down, especially when there's no elevators to get to the train things. You have to go up and down stairs and things like that. Things can drag us and slow us down. And there were many days where we both looked at our suitcases and wanted to throw them away, but I needed them for all the church stuff I was buying in Poland. So all the different things to pile up and bring back. But those things, things can slow us down from getting to where we're supposed to be. From, uh, and, and in fact, just distract us away from what we're supposed to be doing. And it's interesting that Jesus says, you know, for them to carry a staff. 
Now, staff, uh, especially when you see people walking in the Camino, actually, uh, Caitlin's got many staffs in her office right now. I was going to go grab one before Mass and, and use it today, but it's for the uh, kids' camp coming up in, a, in another week. Uh, and a staff, you know, oftentimes you'll see people walking with a staff. It helps you with balance. Um, if you're walking in the midst of some terrain or something, it might help you clear different things. It gives you a sense of stability, uh, a sense of confidence, and again, gives you that sense of balance. For us, when we're being proclaimers of the good news, is do we literally need a staff? Well, no, but what gives us stability? What gives us confidence? What helps clear away the pathway for us to walk? It is our prayer. It is our daily meditation and reflection. It is the gift of the sacraments that strengthen us, heal us, feed us. It is the reality of knowing that God is with us and that we bear his message that gives us the strength, even at times, because one of the fundamentals of being a prophet or a messenger of today, too, is the fact that we will be rejected, that we will be persecuted, that we'll be disregarded, that will be pushed to the side, and in some ways, and somehow, we will be uh, killed, in a sense. Because Jesus says, you want to be a follower of mine, you've got to take up your cross and follow me, and Jesus becomes that model for us of being a messenger of the good news, that we need that stability, we need that strength, so that we can persevere, because at last weekend we heard the reading Jesus say in the gospel, those who persevere will be rewarded in the end. And so as we continue in our Mass this morning, we again recognize the fact that we are messengers of the good news. We are prophets. And we don't need much of anything other than needing the Lord in our lives and rely on Him. Everything else will be provided. Even the words of what we're supposed to say will be provided for us if we trust in Him, if we're open to Him. But we're going to need that stability. We're going to need that strength that only God can provide. And when we do, as the disciples went out, because we will hear, of course, we hear in the gospel, when they come back and they tell the stories to Jesus of the cures that uh, they were able to see, the witness of faith that they were able to participate in. And even in, we hear, especially during the Easter season, uh, the apostles and the Acts of the Apostles, they rejoiced for being, having to suffer for the Lord. They rejoiced for being flogged, uh, for proclaiming the resurrection. There is a joy um, that is a grace of proclaiming and living out the good news. May we have the strength to persevere and the courage to share that good news because we know we have been chosen. We know we have been called. We know that we have been given the grace to do that. May we be proclaimers and prophets today, each and every day, filled with goodness. And I think as Pope Francis always says, if we're going to be filled with the gospel and share the good news, we do that with joy. And with joy, I end my homily this morning. And all of your joy, too.